This lesson is to solve quadratic equations. You have solved quadratic equations by graphing. Another method used to solve quadratic equations is to factor and use the zero product property. For all real numbers a and b, if the product of two quantities equals zero, at least one of the two quantities equals zero. So anytime you're multiplying something and the answer is zero, one of the two things you're multiplying has to be zero. That's the only way you can get that answer. So for example, if we have three times zero, that equals zero, or zero times four, that equals zero. So if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. One of them has to. That's the only way we can get an answer of zero. Use the zero product property to solve the equation. Check your answer. x minus seven times x plus two equals zero. So we're going to use the zero product property, meaning either the x minus 7 has to be equal to 0 or the x plus 2 has to be equal to 0. Since we don't know which one, we solve for both. So we're going to solve and we get 7 or negative 2. Then when you check your answer, you're going to substitute the solution for x into the original equation. So if we tried 7 first, we would get 7 minus 7 times 7 plus 2, which is 0 times 9, when 0 equals 0. If we plugged in the negative 2, we would get negative 2 minus 7 and negative 2 plus 2. And we would get negative 9 times 0, which also equals 0. Use the zero product property to solve each equation. Check your answer. For this one, we have x minus 2 times x equals 0. So either the x minus 2 equals 0 or just the x equals 0. So we get x equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0 and we solve and we get x equals 2. So the solutions are 0 and 2. Then when we check, we're going to substitute each solution for x into the original equation. So if we tried 0 first, we'd get 0 minus 2 times 0. So negative 2 times 0 equals 0. 0 equals 0. And then if we tried 2, we would get 2 minus 2 times 2, which is 0 times 2, which is still 0. Use the zero product property to solve each equation. Check your answer. x times x plus 4 equals 0. This one's for you to try and then you can check back for your answer. So we're going to use the zero product property meaning either x equals 0 or the x plus 4 equals 0. So we're going to solve the equation by subtracting 4 from both sides and we get x equals negative 4. So the solutions are either 0 or negative 4. Then we need to check our answer by substituting each solution for x into the original equation. So we get 0 times 0 plus 4 equals 0 times 4 equals 0. So 0 equals 0. And then if we plug in negative 4, we get negative 4 times negative 4 plus 4. So that's negative 4 times 0, and 0 equals 0. So we know we've done our answers correctly. Use the zero product property to solve the equation. Check your answer. x plus 4 times x minus 3 equals 0. This one's for you to try, and then you can check back for your answer. So we're going to use the zero product property. Either the x plus 4 has to equal 0 or the x minus 3. We don't know which one, so we solve for both. And we get negative 4 or 3. Then we check our answer by substituting the solution for x back into the original equation. We did negative 4 first. We get negative 4 plus 4 times negative 4 minus 3. 0 times negative 7, 0 equals 0. And 3, we would get 3 plus 4 times 3 minus 3. And 7 times 0 equals 0, 0 equals 0. If a quadratic equation is written in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then to solve the equation, you may need to factor before using the zero product property. To solve the quadratic equation by factoring, check your answer, x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So we're going to factor the trinomial. We are looking for two numbers that when multiply give us 8 and add give us negative 6. So those two numbers would be negative 4 and negative 2. So we would write out x minus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. Then we use the zero product property, either the x minus 4 or the x minus 2 has to equal 0. We don't know which one, so we solve for both, and we get 4 and 2. Then to check our answer, we would plug 4 back into the original equation and see that it equals 0 equals 0, and we would plug 2 back into the original equation and end up with 0 equals 0. To solve the quadratic equation by factoring, check your answer. Negative 2x squared equals 20x plus 50. This one's not in the correct format yet, so the first thing we're going to have to do is add 2x squared to both sides. So that gives us 0 equals 2x squared plus 20x plus 50. 
Then we're going to factor out the greatest common factor, which is the 2, and we're left with inside, so the 2 is on the outside of the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we're left with x squared plus 10x plus 25, and then we're going to factor that trinomial, and we end up with x plus 5 times x plus 5. So two numbers that would multiply give me 25 and add to give me 10 would be 5 and 5. Or if you notice, it's also a perfect square trinomial pattern um, because x squared and 25 are both perfect squares, and then multiply together x and 5 times 2 in the middle would be 10. Then we're going to use the zero product property. 2 cannot equal 0, obviously. There's no x there for us to um, plug a number into. x plus 5 is the same for both, so we only need to solve once, and we get negative 5. So then to check our answer, we would substitute just negative 5 into uh, the equation and see if it ends up equaling, and it's negative 50 equals negative 50. x minus 3 times x minus 3 is a perfect square. Since both factors are the same, you only have to solve one of them. Solve the quadratic equation by factoring. Check your answer. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. This one's for you to try, and then you can check back for your answer. First thing we have to do is factor the trinomial. We're looking for two numbers that want to multiply, give us 9, and add, give us negative 6, and that would be negative 3 and negative 3. Or if you notice, it is a perfect square trinomial. Um, either way, you'll end up with x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. And we use the zero product property x minus 3 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. Since they're the same, you only need to solve once. So we would get 3. And then to check, we're going to substitute 3 back into the original equation and make sure that it comes out equal, and it does. Solve the quadratic equation by factoring. Check your answer. 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. This one's for you to try, and then you can check back for your answer. So first we're going to factor the trinomial. This one has a number in front of the squared term other than 1. So you would have to either use the x box or the chart, depending on which method you prefer. And you would end up with 3x minus 1 times x minus 1. And we're going to use the zero product property. Either the 3x minus 1 has to equal 0 or the x minus 1 has to equal 0. We don't know which one, so we solve for both. And we end up with 1 third or 1. So the solutions are 1 third or 1. And to check our answer, we would plug one-third back into the equation and see that it becomes equal, and it does, 0 equals 0. And we would plug one back into the equation to make sure that it comes out correctly, and it does, 0 equals 0. The height and feet of a diver above the water can be modeled by h of t equals negative 16 times t squared plus 8t plus 8, where t is the time in seconds after the diver jumps off a platform. Find the time it takes for the diver to reach the water. So the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 8. The diver reaches the water when h equals 0. The height would be 0 from the water. So 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 8. So we're going to factor out a greatest common factor first, which is negative 8, and we get 0 equals negative 8 times 2t squared minus t minus 1. We're going to factor that trinomial either using the x box or chart, depending on which method you prefer, and you would get 2t plus 1 times t minus 1. We're going to use the zero product property. Obviously, negative 8 cannot equal 0 since there's no variable there for us to plug anything into. Um, 2t plus 1 equals 0 or t minus 1 equals 0. We don't know which one, so we're going to solve for both. And we would get t equals negative 1 half. That doesn't make sense in the real life situation, so we're not going to include that as one of our answers. She obviously can't dive for negative seconds. So the diver takes one second to reach the water. We're going to check that by plugging it back into the original equation and making sure that it comes out equal, and it does, 0 equals 0. What if the equation for the height above the water for another diver can be modeled as h equals negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 24, so the c value is different? Find the time it takes this diver to reach the water. This one's for you to try, and then you can check back for your answer. So the equation is h equals negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 24. The diver is going to reach the water when the height equals 0, so we're going to plug in 0 for h, and we get 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 24. We're going to factor out the greatest common factor first, which is negative 8, and inside the parentheses we'll have left 2t squared minus t minus 3. 
Then we're going to factor that trinomial either using Xbox or the chart, whichever, whichever method you prefer. And we get 0 equals negative 8, that's the greatest common factor we pulled out at the beginning, times 2t minus 3 times t plus 1. We're going to use the zero product property. Negative 8 cannot equal 0. There's no variable for us to plug any values into there. 2t minus 3 equals 0 or t plus 1 equals 0. We're going to solve for both. We don't know which one. Uh, t cannot equal negative 1 because it doesn't make sense for the diver to be diving for a negative amount of time. And the other value we end up with is 1 and a half. So it takes the diver 1 and a half seconds to reach the water. We're going to plug that back in to check and make sure that it is equal. And it is, so we know we've done it correctly.